curious to know, what did you want to be when you grew up? When you think about back to when you were a young girl, what did you want to be? Well, I never knew that I'd be sitting here with you, Liz, <laughs> with all of you as your lieutenant governor. And I think that's the beauty of life. I can say that uh, I had a mother, have a mother, she's wonderful. I'm so blessed to have her in my life still. And someone that whispered in my ear from the day I was born to where I'm at today, always saying, you can be anything you want to be through every stage of my life. So I've done a few things in life, and I think it's always around believing that you can be anything you want to be, and you don't just have to be one thing. Right. And so the role models in my life did shape uh, me in terms of the, the path, paths that I have taken. Was there ever a time that you were afraid to run for public office? And if so, how did you get past those fears? How did you get past any fears that you've had to go from one thing to the next? Well, uh, first of all, you know, my, my business, my law path, I was a practicing attorney in Worcester for a number of years in a private firm. I worked <coughs> elsewhere before working for my family business. And uh, so the public service was always the hobby. It wasn't my career. And uh, then it was Governor Salucci, another very strong role model in my life, that said, you need to run for higher office. You need to run in a political office. And then I had to think about politics really for the first time, because for me, it was public service. It was helping your community. It wasn't Republican or Democrat. And he was someone that I really connected to because his experience was similar. Small family business, central Massachusetts, selectman, state representative, and then he went on to be lieutenant governor, governor, ambassador, you know, wonderful man. And he, he's the one. So you need someone sometimes in your life to ask, to suggest, to, to make you think mm -hmm. about a, possi a possibility. And I was full of energy. <laughs> and Were you scared asked, at I all? Said, I'll run. Uh, I was, I actually lost, I ran and lost my first right. time. It was in 1998. What did you learn from losing? Learned a lot about myself and believing in myself and re being less reliant on my parents and the others around me and then to really, in my own way, be my own person and really believe in, in the strengths and qualities that, mm. that I have. So losing was a win. Mm -hmm. I went on <coughs> after that to run again and I won uh, my seat in the House of Representatives two years later without a challenge. So all the work that I did in that 98 run was laying the groundwork for something really positive thereafter. So I learned a lot about that experience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to take that risk, take a chance, and do a really good job because it's still a win. What is your definition of success? Well, I think that for success, it's a very, very, very personal definition. Uh, if you want to even call it a definition, I think it's a, a feeling more than anything. Uh, success to me is, uh, you know, your own happiness. You, you can gauge that every day. And the happiness inside is important, but it's the happiness of the people in your world that I think really measures success day to day. You know, how happy are the people that are your work team with their experience with you? How happy is your family with the time that you spend with them? How happy is the larger world around you with the work that you're doing? So happiness really defines uh, the success for me. And one last question, because we want to keep everybody on time for your tour coming up. What is the biggest lesson you feel that you have learned through all the various roles that you have held, professionally and personally? What's the biggest lesson you've learned that you want to share with everybody today? A lesson learned. Whether it's about work-life balance, whether it's about who you are as a person. I, I, I'll tell you, um, th it was actually, uh, this, I'll just use this as an example. When I felt my service was finished in 2010, I served as a selectman, I served locally, I served in the House of Representatives, I ran statewide. I didn't win, but I had a conversation on a statewide level that was really meaningful. And then I said, I, I feel good. 
I've done, I've checked off a lot of things that I had as personal goals for myself. And I said, now it's time really to focus on my family and my business. My parents are getting older. I'm good with that. And I retreated. And then <laughs> it just came, kept coming back, that thing inside. Like I missed being part of the decision making as I saw in a state that's so great, love this state grew up here, love it in so many ways, as do you. I felt that things could be better in some areas. And I said, I just can't, can't relax and let it go. And knowing that feeling and being able to have that conversation with my husband and my family and say, hey, team, I'm thinking about running again. <clears throat> and it wasn't easy having lost before, but it was easy in the sense that I knew inside I can just drive this thing forward. Mm -hmm. I have enough energy and commitment and belief in doing it and then not being afraid and when uh, Charlie and I were discussing the run for governor lieutenant governor and teaming up it felt really right and knowing what right is for you mm -hmm. and not being afraid my friends to take a risk take a risk when it feels right take it do it take it you got all the experience and the, the hard work all that comes with you. So that little risk that's out there, don't be afraid of it. I have to ask one more question <laughs> because she raised an interesting point, but I'll get to it in a second, which is you talk about that burning desire within you that something you knew there was something more for you to do. And I dare say that each of you in here, as part of whether you're running your own business or thinking about running your own business, there's something inside of you that's saying, I need to do this. And you need to take that risk. So next question, final question, I promise. What's on your bucket list after Lieutenant Governor? <laughs> That's a long way off because so. Uh, I know, we're, but. We're looking at re-election. <laughs> so we're looking we're at a, seven, eight years from now. We're looking at a, a ways off. Like I said before, I do a really good job at what's at hand. Because uh, as I bring to this office a sense of urgency every single day, I know that Governor and I would like to continue to serve you know, this term, four years, will go by very quickly. And in three years, we're telling a story about what we campaigned on, making Massachusetts great everywhere, and what we were able to do in office and measure and hold ourselves accountable, and in three years, tell that story of what we were able to do. And that's what keeps me focused right now, <laughs> every single day, making sure that we are doing the job that we promised to do for you. Well, I dare say there will be next chapters for our Lieutenant Governor eventually down the road. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, thank you so much. Real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.